Okay, so for week 10 of spring anime, the shows do continue. Season's almost coming to a close. Dungeon Meshi, first season is finished, but second season is confirmed for this fire-ass show. Good world building. I'm so excited. We got to finish off the story. So yeah, look out for that in the future. Also, I caught up to Sound Euphonium, actually. Such a beautiful show. A Kill Andy production. I've binged all three seasons. There, I'm on episode 11 right now. It's the most current one. But it was so good. All the drama in this band is so crazy. All these emotions. All these characters playing. Kumiko following her. Like, I want to talk about it so badly, so I will. Also, yeah, Kaiju number 8. Kind of crazy this week. Is Kafka secret revealed? Is it over for my boy free kafka man he did nothing wrong also mushoku tensei what a father's day episode uh very nuts but literally the best episode of season two so i'm gonna talk about that one as well so yeah for sound euphonium season three we're on episode 11 right now but it's so crazy like the drama like throughout the three seasons i told you i binged it but it was so worth like the anime itself was beautiful and then the character interactions are so nice seeing kumiko kind of like link everyone together basically without her the band would literally be falling apart she's the glue like everyone's getting depression like taki such a bad teacher causing a lot of like toxic situations not really explaining anything having people fend for themselves and then he could easily like kind of clear the air talk to everybody but he doesn't it's just not in his personality he's such a bad teacher it's in his character to be a bad teacher like he didn't really want to be a teacher he was forced into it but anyway like you still accepted the roles so that's no excuse you gotta be better so yeah, kumiko's kind of picking up the slack as like the band president and besides that yeah we had a lot of drama basically our team they want to like get the gold medal they want to like make nationals and win the last two times they attempted they got bronze and then fake gold so yeah, they want the real gold this time and it'll probably happen maybe not in this season but in a season four i'm assuming they'll like step up their game and win the competition because that's what it's all about this is like the third year for kumiko and her friends so yeah, this is like literally our last opportunity everyone Everyone's like working hard for this but yeah like besides all the band practice everyone trying their best there's more drama coming in each episode kind of like telling us more about some different type of like issues people are having they're having a tryout to be part of the band for each concert which is very toxic because it's like they're taking like high pressure tests each time and they don't really understand taki's decision making here in specific there's like this girl mayu who's kind of like a transfer student she's very nice but she kind of like has like a fake mask around her that just doesn't want to cause trouble but also at the same time she's like patronizing people around her like oh should i drop out i feel bad so yeah that shit's going on the drama with her and kumiko is that they're both playing euphonium and mayu takes the solo part which is kind of like a big deal because kumiko is the president so she should technically have it but if mayu played better than her then yeah sure like have mayu get it the thing is people see that kumiko and mayu have equal skill so taki was literally just flipping a coin everyone's kind of sad and depressed and confused <laughs> so they can't really play properly and this is their competition day this is like to get into nationals so the vibes have been so off kumiko in episode 10 basically had like this big kind of apology basically speaking her mind she talked to asuka as well but yeah basically she tells kumiko that her talent is basically to just like speak her mind just like at the last minute she kind of clutches things out brings everyone together so yeah they do get in they make it to nationals i, I think the problem is like this half-assed apology was not it like there's still more underlying issues that haven't been resolved and taki bro he, like he's such a fraud i'm glad his downfall has been like shown for other people to see but yeah he's just like such a bad teacher he doesn't really give any solid advice and it causes a lot of like unneeded toxicity also after that we saw reyna like I, I don't really have problems with her but she's been a bit annoying she's also in love with taki like people are saying oh it's cute it's just puppy love but bro there's a 20 year age gap but i mean it's like a, a common anime trope i guess but yeah, hopefully reyna gets better hopefully her relationship with kumiko and shuichi like kind of gets stronger and the band is like back together again but yeah, basically just like a lot of toxic dramatic moments in this anime i'm all for it i really love it it's written so well all these characters have like multiple issues going on different layers and then kumiko's there trying to like bring everything together i'm hoping everything works out for her but yeah, she's like a great main character to follow so yeah euphonium has been great this anime is beautiful every season so yeah i can't wait to finish it up okay so for mushoku tensei season 2 part 2 episode 10 insane episode one of the best okay this is the best episode of season 2 no cap maybe rudy is finally revealing silent fritz's identity as selfie that was also like a good episode but this one insane good progression from top to bottom you can feel like a sense of despair as we're reaching the end of this episode a lot of stuff you could see coming but it just hurts so hard i thought season two was a bit weaker like for sure 
animation wise and story wise like Rudius has been very annoying but but the story does keep it consistent in the terms of like stuff makes sense a lot of new things link back to old things and i guess the fantasy elements are pretty well done but yeah i'm just rambling what happened here while well, they kind of go to the next level of the dungeon which Rudius kind of discovered we see there's a hydra so it's the final boss and if they kill the hydra they see that Rudius's mom zenith is kind of trapped in a crystal behind the hydra when paul sees the mom that's like all on his mind he's been spending the past eight years i think just like looking for her it's so crazy that we're finally here so yeah we have to rescue her paul is just like seeing red he wants to destroy this hydra and you know he's doing it like he's so fast and like using his daggers and his sword to just like slice the heads off you know it's a hydra though so the heads like infinitely grow back so yeah there might be multiple ways to take it down i was assuming like the hydra regening might take mana or energy so keep chopping the heads but it seems like way too dangerous everyone else can't really use magic either because this hydra has magic skills that absorb mana so yeah, that just like destroys all their plans rodius and roxy can't really help out the hydra is able to penetrate through ellie and alisa's defense and yeah it's just like way too powerful paul does not want to retreat because he's just so close to his goal so they all kind of like gather around make a plan talk together and then they go around two against the hydra so their plan is basically to cut its heads off, but then like cauterize the heads. Rudy is kind of just like pulled that out of Greek mythology where Hercules kind of fought a Hydra. So yeah, they're doing this. It's a pretty good plan. Like everyone's kind of dodging and everything. And it's like very high tension. But Rudy does have like the demon eye so he can like kind of see through everything. Roxy's healing everyone as they're kind of defending the attacks. And Paul's just like chopping the heads off. And yeah, Rudy just kind of burns the heads off one by one. It's going pretty well. There's some like bumps in the road. And then it, it gets like really bad when the Hydra can bite off the burnt part of the neck itself and then regen generate the head like that i thought that was pretty creative so they quickly kind of just like freeze and stop the hydra from attacking and then finally there's like one or two heads left rudius is like celebrating a bit early he's like oh we're so close to our goal and then yeah he got distracted this motherfucker and then paul kicks him out of the way to rescue him the thing is he kicked him a bit too hard rudius has no chance to react paul pushes him away blocks the attack and he dies his body's just like cut in half no way to rescue him no way to heal him rudius also gets his left arm kind of cut in half as he's like punching the eye of the hydra so they do kill it but yeah they suffered a lot of injuries we lost paul <laughs> Oh my god. But yeah, before they even like had a chance to like even see that, uh, would they rescue the mom in the crystal? So is this that equivalent exchange I've been hearing so much about? It's so sad. The kind of emotions were so well done as they're like leaving the dungeon, just walking all tired and wary. It's like they achieved their goal, but then it just like wasn't worth it. Even though Paul admitted that like he'd risk his life for this, like Rudius did make the mistake himself. So he also feels like a big sense of responsibility and shame. So again, this is probably going to take some time for our characters to process. But yeah, the worst part, is when Zenith kind of wakes up four days later her memory's just gone and she turned into like a baby so it's kind of like potato casca from berserk oh my god I mean this episode felt like on par with like you know berserk level sadness but yeah so much shit kind of went wrong as they tried to rescue the mom like the dad died and a mom has just like regressed to a baby so I, I assume they can probably save the mom in a couple years maybe like research some advanced magic so that's not like the end of the world but like the aftermath of this uh, Rudius has to like talk to his little sisters Norn is probably not gonna forget give his ass because she loved the father and now like she doesn't even have a mother like she got nothing so yeah again that's gonna be sad Rudy's also missed the birth of his daughter and you know this is all like what the man god told us though if you went to the labyrinth you would have regrets these are probably the regrets you lost both your parents pretty much but if he didn't go to the labyrinth at all like paul would have like pretty much died anyway because he would have just like explored the labyrinth on his own roxy would have also died because yeah she got lost so yeah a lot to think about but yeah this is the story so far very solid episode it's kind of like fitting we do have two episodes left though so yeah a lot more shit can happen maybe more character moments they're probably gonna speed run through all the dialogue emotional aspects of like losing their parents and then yeah go to the next part of the story we gotta see but yeah i've been like not really liking season two for the most part parts one and two but yeah i knew the story moments were special in this anime so yeah, child predator groomer pedophilia shit aside this episode was like so worth it okay so for kaiju number eight episode 10 yes it's crazy kafka bro his secret is out he had to kind of like defeat this giant kaiju he got defeated but turned into a giant bomb and then kafka had to like you know punch the bomb away it was so sad because like it was just well done just like seeing the dramatic moment of his life just being over his identity is revealed he has to basically get arrested now but yeah all that happens towards the end of this episode in the beginning though we get the fight with the kaiju continuing this giant red honju hoshin is kind of like fighting against him which was so cool he's just doing his demon slayer attacks with his daggers he almost sliced his core off earlier but yeah like this dude kind of just like grew infinitely bigger and now he can just like summon all these kind of exploding flying bird kaijus as well so yeah hoshin has to like deal with that he's getting like punched and beaten up a lot he can only dodge so much and then yeah the kaiju is just like way too tough and we get hoshin his backstory as well we saw a bit of it but yeah notice a bit more 
So yeah, basically he was really good at swords and daggers, but he was very bad at guns. And yeah, this like kind of world of kaijus, they have like different power levels for different weapons and techniques. So basically guns are pretty much the meta right now in the army. No one really wants you if you're like a close range like sword user. So he was like, basically a reject throughout his life. And then Mina finally saw potential in him. She's like, yeah, we need your skill. If there's like a ground level kaiju threat, you're the one to handle it. So she kind of recruited him. He finally found worth. And now it was like a cute moment seeing them like together because yeah he's just like proving how strong he is and then yeah these daggers they're like kind of doing work but then the kaiju eventually does grab him kafka comes in he's about to transform because he can't really see hoshina die but then that's when mina shows up finally i was wondering where she was he gets the bfg her giant ass tiger is kind of like padding her as well and then she just blasts the kaiju multiple times like releasing her limiter as well we see that they only have 10 minutes of this like kind of limit release so yeah everyone else from the defense force comes in just like shooting the kaiju helping out shinomi is also there just like using her axe to cut off its legs destroying this kaiju at such a feel-good moment and then yeah we did it everyone's like happy celebrating except yes it's not over yes the kaiju body turns into like a shit ton of bombs like 200 kilotons literally in the sky just like coming in about to destroy the whole city and yeah like only kafka has the energy to stop it he transforms into kaiju number eight in front of everybody it's literally over for my boy but i'm glad they did it because they didn't really string us along it's this isn't really like a two three season thing it's happening towards the climax of the first season so a yeah, perfect timing for it his secret is revealed so we gotta deal with the aftermath later right now though he saves everyone he punches the giant explosion it reminded me of Saitama punching the asteroid in One Punch Man. Also in Demon Slayer, where like that dude's body just exploded. But yeah, the thing is, yeah, no one dies in these explosions because that'd be a lame way to go out. Kafka punches it. There's like kind of shockwaves because it still damages a bit of the city. But yeah, I don't think anyone died in this attack, which is very cool. Kafka saved a lot of people's lives. But yeah, the problem is now he's arrested. It's like a cool scene where we just see like kind of an emotional flashback. I'm apologizing to all his friends that like kept a secret and relied on him. It was very sad, very well done good music as well seeing his like pain face as his kaiju mask comes off seeing mino just like reluctant to like kind of shoot and arrest him but yeah he's being taken into custody free my boy kafka he did nothing wrong but such a great episode good action good emotional moments okay so for my hero season seven episode seven kind of crazy episode we saw shigaraki just destroy mirko with his hands he doesn't have his uh, decay quirk but the problem is, like, he can just crush you. <laughs> he can just grow parts of his hands like nails. That's what he called it. But they're literally, like, billions of hands going around everywhere. How does he have the energy to do this? But yeah, we don't really ask questions here. This anime is running on the rule of cool, it seems like, ever since season 5, where Deku got all the one-for-all powers. Because pretty much, like, things don't have to make sense. As long as it's cool, as long as the story kind of flows and there's fights, then that's all that matters. But yeah, pretty much, yeah, Shigaraki is pretty much overpowered. The copy guy cannot release the erasure power because if he does, then Shigaraki is just going to destroy everything with his, like, giant hands. So yeah, we also have to wait for Deku because that was their game plan, having Deku, like, be the powerhouse to beat him. The problem is Deku's chilling in this island with a lot of hot girls, Uraraka, Froppy, and Toga, the Yandere. She's in love with Deku. She admits it. Deku's kind of embarrassed. And, I mean, it, it was a bit dumb. She was able to drag Deku here. Like, come on, bro. Uh, like, the excuse was, like, his danger sense didn't act up. But, like, she's just a regular high school girl. Maybe she has enhanced physical, like, abilities. But, yeah, her quirk is inactive. So, you can, like, literally just punch her in the face and run away. The thing is, like, Toga seems to just be, like, dodging everything. 1v3 is, like, no problem for her. Seems very out of character. Like, this is Deku. He's about to, like, face a all for one final boss and he's struggling against toga so i thought that was kind of weird but yeah, anyway like we kind of ignore that uh we see toga takes uraka's power she kind of like stabs her but then she's fine Froppy also helps out and then deku uses that opportunity to kind of run away so yeah he uses kind of like the rocket boost flying one for all power to like you know glide back he has to literally go from the island back to the mainland to fight shigaraki like fight up in the sky so i don't know how he's gonna get there but i mean if there's a will there's a way that's our main character so yeah we'll see what he's gonna do after that at the end of this episode we see dabi he's fighting all the like kind of fire people that can handle his powers and todoroki's also leading the way so yeah dabi wants to fight his dad but yeah he's not here so it looks like todoroki's gonna show up but yeah, dobby's power is like insane like his fire is like super hot it's spreading so much and it looks like he's burning his own face so yeah maybe he'll sacrifice himself for revenge it's kind of crazy you know this dude dobby's unhinged we'll probably get more of his backstory next episode as well but we pretty much know all about him his dad like abused him and then like neglected him and forgot about him and he was trying to like overcompensate by like overusing his power and that's how he got like these severe burns so yeah it's a sad life for him we'll see what's gonna happen but yeah um three fights are going on simultaneously deku's trying to make his way to all for one and it seems like 
like Tolko has reached like top five levels in terms of speed and power because she can 1v3 these heroes so easily on the water. Okay, so for Dungeon Meshi episode 24, this is the finale. What a great anime. Like we're just eating food good world building just like so many different monsters they went so hard kind of linking everything together like getting all these different races like elves tall men beast people and then all these monsters in this dungeon were kind of just like very well done we're eating them so it's a common theme it's no different here as they realize like the way to save fallen is to eat her because if you eat her dragon parts only then her human soul will still be alive so yeah we're gonna end off this series the way we started just like eating monsters <laughs> That's the plan, but yeah, they also got to defeat the Mad Mage that's on their ass, so I don't think it's going to be easy defeating this Dark Elf. But yeah, besides that, we kind of like solve more problems this episode because everyone kind of turned into like different races because of the Changeling Mushroom. They're able to like kind of counteract that by like washing off the Mushroom Spores. Before that though, they kind of defeat some Gargoyles by like making a ring around their bodies because they have Mushroom Spores around them and transforming the Gargoyles into Stone Statues. And after that, they eat some like different dumplings because they're eating the Hippogriff Dumplings, but it's like combined into like the Changeling Mushrooms. So it's just like a mix of every different type of dumpling you can find it looked very delicious we see yes they're like eating food together they're talking about fallen how laos kind of saved her because her village kind of isolated her for being like really good at magic it was kind of taboo and yeah they became adventurers exploring the dungeon together so yeah we do have to rescue her asap they have the plan to eat her of course it's gonna be a hard plan first you have to like cut off the dragon part the chicken part of her so yeah they have to invite everyone to eat this giant chicken monster it's very on theme but yeah i had really fun watching this anime i think everyone loved it it's like very strong world building a very funny concept that was done very well and yeah season two confirmed so we'll probably like explore the dungeon a bit more see more races fight off the mad king and eat fallen and save her as well okay so for dead demons ddd destruction episode three uh some stuff happens we see the aliens are kind of showing up right now so yeah they're like little gray people and they're like stealing people's bodies the body snatchers if you've seen it from episode zero yeah this is nothing new but right now yeah it's a bit creepy we don't know who to trust we don't know how many aliens there are and the fact that the military are finally now shooting off the alien spaceships might cause some trouble it might be some fights between the aliens and the humans which will be sad but yeah i mean besides the aliens you know we're just doing more slice of life high school things like all the girls are hanging out we see kanode and ontan we see one of the girls from their friend group kind of like breaks up with her boyfriend because he he saw an alien sighting he turned to a new person just like into conspiracy theories and stuff and then he does have a point because these aliens are real but no one seems to believe him so he's just like escaping the city trying to like tell the girl about it too she doesn't really like his new attitude which is very funny but yeah you know just like high school drama coming in the aliens probably will play a part in the future. But yeah, we see one of the aliens. He's kind of like a hot dude from the boy band that Karode was listening to a couple episodes ago. And then yeah, he's been missing for six months. So it looks like right now they have advanced technology. He has like this item called like a DDDD that like levitates things. So I mean, title drop right there. That might be important. And besides that, yeah, we see that he's just gathering information, trying to integrate to this human body. Good character setups, good conversation, good music. But yeah, I guess we'll see what's going to happen in the future. And pretty fun, creepy story so far. Okay. Okay, so for Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night Episode 11, all these girls are kind of like solving their problems. It's pretty funny, like they, they have like these superficial issues and it's kind of solved by just them yelling, venting their frustrations in public. And once they release all that pressure together, they kind of like face the truth, feel better, and now they're back to normal. So yeah, that's no different here. We see Mahiru, she has like kind of trouble with her art because she hates her art. <laughs> She hates how that looks. We we see this like a reoccurring theme. Like everyone kind of criticized her art when she was younger. And that kind of became a trauma for her. She can't really draw passionately. And that's like a problem because people do like her art. So she has to like accept herself. We see her talking to Kiwi because apparently they did get docs, like their whole band name and all their identities. <laughs> they, and now people are kind of like texting them. Kiwi does have it rough because she dropped out of school. So yeah, all of her older classmates are giving her so much shit. She wants to be herself, like have like this cool like hero, tough leader personality. But yeah, inside, she's just like a little girl feeling all these pressures from outside so i feel for her she kind of like hangs out with mahiru they're like in an arcade when they like kind of meet their older classmates they're kind of shit talking kiwi mahiru is trying to defuse the situation but kiwi is like behind them she doesn't want to back down so she kind of like quietly talks back to them and then finally yells out loud so she's talking about how she like accepts herself for who she is like she does have regrets from like dropping out of school and everything so yeah, stop talking shit about her so yeah, she's just being herself all the other girls from jelly are getting better getting stronger kano's like making her own music that she can find 
probably sing to. My hero is able to like make an art piece that she's proud of. And yeah, that's the end of this episode. Everyone's like solving their problems. I assume it's going to end with Jelly like performing in this concert. So a yeah, solid episode, good setup for the finale. The anime is beautiful and the emotions are so real. Okay, so for Konosuba season three, episode 10, bro, it's so sad. We have to save darkness, but Cosmos is given up. Ain't no way. So yeah, just like this whole episode was like kind of like a depressing buildup on how we like can't stop darkness from like inevitably marrying this guy. Everyone's trying to help like Megman's little like being a terrorist calling in bomb threats to the church of the wedding. Also Aqua just like doing like performances in front of Darkness's house to get her like to come out. But none of it is working. Cosmo literally can't like fight off the nobles or do anything illegal. But he just gives up. It's so sad. Like I, I was like bro like come on you're the main character. Like it can't end like this. It can't be this many sad moments in my fun parody isekai show. So yeah Vanir does come in to give Cosmo a new opportunity. Basically he has him pay off the debts that Darkness owes and she doesn't have to marry this guy anymore. So yeah he like kind of offers him a lot of like gold coins for like these earth patterns so yeah he gives like some new ideas to Vanir and yeah Cosmo is able to rescue darkness at the end of this episode everyone kind of like disguises as like kind of like the wedding sermon people they save darkness at the last minute so they were kind of stringing us along this episode seeing all these sad moments seeing her like accept her fate like being married to this like fat ugly bastard king but yeah, besides that yeah they kind of save her Aqua disguises as the priest and they didn't really pay off the debt yet I guess they'll kind of settle this next episode but yeah there might be some fights going on like Megaman literally ready to do some explosions out here but yeah, you know just like a fun moment seeing Cosmo rescue darkness like good kind of main character moment for him and besides that yeah it was a feel-good ending for like a more kind of sad episode but yeah this is what Konosuba got for us it can be really funny at times but also like when it needs to be serious have some plot moments it does do that as well okay so for Spice and Wolf the remake episode 11 we continue our gold smuggling plan it, it goes pretty smoothly for the most part like there's some wolves in the forest actually but we got Nora the shepherd with her dog able to ward them off and also Hollow is there like the wolf goddess she can literally just intimidate and threaten them and they can make it pass freely although these wolves have been so aggressive so yeah we'll kind of deal with that later they basically travel together with one of the people from the company they get the gold and are basically gonna like make the sheep eat it as they're coming back so yeah the plan kind of goes smoothly except as they're coming back through the forest more wolves start attacking them so yeah, Nora and the other guy kind of like go ahead as Lawrence and Hollow stay behind to like give them a chance so it looks like they sacrifice themselves but you know Hollow she goes like full beast mode <laughs> giant wolf mode and it's fighting the other wolves off so it looks like they're being led by another giant wolf god that's so like so it's like god against god it's like a younger god i i feel like hollow will literally have no problems like this isn't really an action show so yeah hollow kind of like fighting him off is probably not a big deal but i mean the big part is also lawrence gets betrayed oh my god i, I hate this <laughs> but it happens a lot so yeah more more tension more drama basically the company that they're smuggling gold for they want to like have less people know as possible so their plan is to kill off lawrence and hollow maybe nora will still be alive because she works for the church but yeah everyone else is like gonna be targeted lawrence gets beaten up they don't really kill him but they tie him up in the forest so i guess if hollow does find him it's gonna be like it's gonna be a bad time for these dudes but i mean th that's what happens when you do illegal kind of gold smuggling merchant stuff people will try to like betray and backstab you to cover their own asses but kind of like a crazy escalation happening this anime is gonna be two cores so we're not really halfway done yet but yeah the end of this arc will probably be pretty cool seeing lawrence kind of like actually have to navigate to like a real situation that has consequences for him and besides that yeah there's like a lot of crazy shit that he's been going through this anime like his life has been targeted through every mission like without hollow he would have been dead like 10 times over but i think that's like something people have been saying that he's been putting himself in risky situations because of hollow <laughs> that's not that hollow is saving him he's in these situations in the first place because he wants to show off to her so yeah watch out for you guys getting a business degree it's not that easy <laughs> you might be in some life-threatening situations unless you have a wolf waifu protecting you all right so for windbreaker episode 11 we meet some more characters in a boat for in school so we get this pink haired dude his name is Kiryu we also see this kind of like giant protein drinking dude his name is Sugishita and basically all talking they're all like doing their own thing that's why they didn't show up to like this big gang fight that happened earlier we see Kiryu coming in like with this girl that's not really his girlfriend he was like protecting her from getting like beaten up by these gang members so yeah I mean this city has been dangerous we've known this like even regular people are like getting assaulted there right now like the boyfriend school are like beating up all these guys Sakura is there like is punching them out Sugishita kind of like takes a punch before hitting other people so that's cool alley kind of knocking out all the other dudes so yeah you know another gang fight more characters coming in it's very cool seeing sakura like making friends keeping the good vibes together being sundere 
he actually like kind of gets contacts on his phone for the first time so he's just like having fun texting people and besides that at the end of this episode we see sakura is being volunteered to be the leader of the class because every class has like the strongest member be the leader also for an archdemon's dilemma how to love your elf bride episode 12 this is the finale it's a very wholesome romance show. I just wanted to mention it very quickly, but yeah, just like the family vibes go hard. Like Sagan bring everyone together. They've been hating him since the beginning, you know, just like arch demons are very evil. There's like strong magic users that are very isolated, but him saving Nephi, bring all these people in his castle together. Like he has like this big strong butler as a dragon slayer. Seeing him as like a grandfather figure, it's super cute. And then everyone else is like coming closer to this like mansion. It's like he's building a family for himself. They just like wholesome vibes with him and Nephi. They're like super awkward. Awkward. every time they make physical contact they just instantly blush but they get closer episode by episode besides that though i thought the slavery elements were a bit too painful like come on nephi you're free but she still wants to wear the collar like i know a lot of fancy shows do have the slavery as like a plot device but it still felt very uncomfortable i think in this case it was used to show how nephi was just like very isolated and Sagan was basically her first friend that rescued her that's why she wants to like wear the collar that's why she wants to be super close to him because she doesn't want to lose him or be away from him so it's just like very cute seeing them like kind of like hang out together eat food together sit on each other's laps and hug each other cute show it finished up i just want to briefly mention it all right and for demon slayer the hashira training arc episode six we get the training from the stone pillar they gotta do a lot of like crazy muscle training everyone the demon slayer hand pcs cannot handle this Tanjiro's kind of like doing things on like boulders, training his abs, eating food. And also like the final test is to push this giant boulder. It's literally like the same training he they had in season one where he had to chop a boulder in half. We see Tanjiro kind of talking to Genya about like his brother and then life and family and a mark on his head. So yeah, that's going on. Also, we see there's a new upper moon. She's the fourth. She's like the lady with the biwa that we saw in the infinity castle. She opens her eyeball, she has one eyeball, looks like a cyclops, and then she has like these tiny eyeballs infiltrating the Demon Slayer headquarters, where she's kind of counting their numbers. So yeah, Muzan also got the intel on deck. We'll see how our heroes will like handle everything, but yeah, that's it for Demon Slayer this week. And yeah, that's it for the shows this week. Thank you for watching. Cool progressions, we're like slowly getting the finale of the season. So yeah, a lot more shows to wrap up, but yeah, there's like a lot of two cores coming on, like I got reincarnated as a slime. The Fable anime has two cores. My Hero Academy, of course, is continuing, as well as Dead Demons and spice and wolf so yeah more stuff to keep up on as we approach the summer season in july oshinoko season two is like on top of my list i'm so excited also the um second season of tower of god i know the first season was a bit mixed but i had fun watching it <laughs> so i'm kind of excited to see how season two kind of like continues on with the story there's a the dear girl anime shika noko 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 dan dan <laughs> that's cool near automata so yeah a lot more continuations happening in the summer i'll see you there but we got a few more weeks left of this anime season so thank you for watching i'll see you next week Peace.